Alright, today I'm going to like explain this simple trigonometric question. Yeah, and then actually this is like one of the students in my group asked me about this question. So this question actually is quite simple, but then in order to solve this kind of question, you must have the basic understanding about the trigonometrics. Alright, so first you will see a diagram, and then you will see some angle A, uh, angle X and angle Y over here, and then some lengths given a 9 cm, 11 cm, 7 cm. Alright, one of the very important information here is he give you tangent x equals to 4 over 3. So I'm going to like mark down something like this. So let's say we got we got tangent we got tangent x equals to 4 over 3. Alright. Alright. So from here tangent x. So whenever he's called tangent x so I will find x. So x, we have got 4 over 3. You must always understand that this 4 over 3 is the ratio. It's not the actual length, but then it's the ratio. So this one, you must always understand it is the ratio. Alright, this is not the actual length. This is the ratio. Alright, so okay, let me continue. So if I want to like roughly draw out the triangle, okay. Let's let's say I roughly sketch out the triangle. Alright. We got the let's say I got this one is x. So now I know tangent is equal to opposite over adjacent. If this is the x, opposite will be this side. So this one will be four over three. Okay, four opposite over adjacent. Alright. So from here what is the actual length over here? Actual length for E to A is 9 cm. So assume this is E, this is A. And then of course this is C. So if the actual length over here is 9 cm, then what is the actual length for here? So I say this is a ratio, right? If 3 will become 9 cm, so we know that 4 will become 4 will become 6 uh 12 cm all right so if here is like 9 cm this is 12 cm obviously we know this one will be 15 cm because of the Pythagoras this is 90 degree right all right so if you can understand this one then let me move on so i know this is 9 so here will be 12 so here we 12 i got 7 over here so i know here actually is 5 cm Alright, 9, this is 12, so we know hypotenuse will equal to 15, so this one will be 4 cm. Because 4 plus the 11 equals to 15. Because we know 3, 4, here we 5, right? This is, pi this is just Pythagoras, nothing very special. So now we know the actual length. So whenever you, you need to understand, whenever you give you a side cost tangent, it is just a ratio. This is not the actual length. Means the ratio tell you that this is 3, this is 4, and this is 5. So when he come to the actual length, you have to like calculate it by yourself. Alright, if you can understand this one, then let me move on. Okay, he asks you to find the values of cos y. So in order to find cos y, you must have your angle like less than 90. Means, means the value must be like inside the uh, inside a triangle, right? So the problem over here is this y actually bigger than 90 degree. Be this is obtuse angle, means the angle which is bigger than 90 degree. So we have to use this angle to find. Alright, this part is a little bit hard to understand. Okay, for this one, we know that when angle is uh, bigger than 90 degree, actually he fall in the second quadrant. The first quadrant is, this is a called first quadrant, is from 0 to 90 degree. Right? And then this is second quadrant, is from 90 to 180 degree. Okay, we know one straight line is 180. This one, of course, is less than 180. Impossible, you will think that this angle is more than 180. Okay, what I know is, if this one is 90 degree like this, this one is more than 90, so it's fall in the second quadrant. However, we can use 180 minus this angle to got this one. So I'm going to call this one y1. Okay, 
Okay, what you need to understand over here is, let's say, cos y1 will have the same value with cos y. Okay, mean this is cos y, this is cos y1. However, I know cos y, I will get negative based on the information we learned before is all sine tangent cos. Okay, mean in the second quadrant, actually cos will get negative, right? This angle is on the second quadrant. So over here, your cos, you will got negative value. Alright, so in this quadrant, this is your uh, angle in the first quadrant, cos will get positive. So therefore, however, you must know that both of them actually is the same. Alright, maybe you feel a little bit confused about this one. Uh, you can try to press your calculator. Let's say I just simply give an example. You press cos 60. Yes, you, cost, you press cos 60, you will got 0 0.5. However, you can still press cos 120, you will got negative 0 0.5. Okay, why I know about this one? Because for example, we have one straight line. Alright, I just randomly draw one line over here. If let's say this is 60 degree, and then this one will be 120. Because plus to get in, should get 180, right? So I say cos 60 will get the same value with cos 120. See, both of them is 0 0.5. Just in the first quadrant, you will got cos positive, And in the second quadrant, you will get cos negative. So this is 0 0.5 if you go for cos. And then you will, this cos 120 is negative 0 0.5. Both of them is same value 0 0.5, just one is positive, the other one is negative based on this rule, all sine tangent cos. Alright, mean first quadrant all positive, second quadrant sine positive, third quadrant tangent positive, and the last quadrant is cos positive. Alright, this is something you, you need to understand. Means because this angle already more than 90 degree already, you can't use this one to find the cos y, so you have to borrow this angle. Alright, this one actually we call it reference angle. Alright, if you can understand, so let me move on. If you can't, then maybe you have to find uh, my my last like last video about trigonometric. Actually, I do explain why this happened. Alright, so I'm going to draw out this triangle in order to find cos y. So I'm going to draw like this. Okay. Yeah, my drawing is not really good, but yeah, I just try my best to draw. Alright, this is 90 degree. This is, oh, here is D, here is B, and here is C. Alright, we got some information. So now we want to use this one. I call it Y1. Because this is not the actual values of Y. Because Y is second quadrant one. Because Y is like the angle 180 minus the Y. Alright, so, but I know this is 4, this is 5. This is the actual length, all right, in cm. So obviously, this is 3 cm. If you're not sure how you can get 3, just use Pythagoras. Just 5 square minus 4 square, and then square root your answer, you've got 3 cm. All right, so now if I want to find cos y1, of course you must understand cos is what? Cos is adjacent over hypotenuse. So it'll be 3 over 5. All right, so now this question is asked about what is cos y. I see both of them will get the same value. Just cos in the second quadrant, you will got negative. So the real answer for cos y will be negative 3 over 5. Alright, so this, this is the way to solve this kind of question. Yeah, so for this one, why you can always borrow the other side. As long as both of them is plus together equals 180, you can do like this. Right, both will give you the same value, just depend which quadrant they are. If if now let's say he asks for sine y over here, sine in the first and second quadrant is is getting positive because all positive, sine positive, right? So both of you will get the same exactly same answer. So if you use sine y1 and sine y, you will get exactly the same answer, even the positive, both will get positive. Alright. I hope this video actually can help you understand a little bit about trigonometrics and how to solve this kind of question and why this one is ratio and what is the actual length and how this happened, how I get 4 and 5. Alright, I hope everything over here you can understand. If you don't, just post me a comment about this one. Alright.
Thanks for watching.